So in this example, um, what we're simply going to do in this example is, Jarvin, if I was going to ask you on a test to evaluate for the sine of 105 degrees, um, if you look at the unit circle, you would realize, oh, 105 degrees, an angle does not cross at 105 degrees of the unit circle at a coordinate point that we're familiar with, right? You've just practiced, I mean, over and over and over again, we practice this. Um, so we can't use the unit circle to evaluate. Um, however, so therefore, I'd probably have to use my calculator. And that's 105 degrees, so I just plug that into my calculator, right? And I just plug that in, sine of 105 degrees. But when you do that, in degree mode, that's going to give you a decimal, right? So it's going to be an approximation, because it's going to be going on and on. So what we're going to need to do then, if I want to find the exact value of sine of 105 degrees, we have some formulas that we're going to use, the sum and the difference formulas. Okay? So the first thing I want to do, though, is can I rewrite 105 degrees if I'm going to use, uh, if I'm going to want to find the exact value? You coming back? Yes. Okay. If you want to find the sine of 105 degrees, basically what we want to do is can we rewrite this in terms of angles that we know the exact value of? We know the exact value of 30, 45, 60, and 60 degrees. Right? So can we write 105 degrees as the sum or difference of those three angles? Yeah, we can use 105 degrees. Huh? Yes. Actually, let me write it to the side. Sorry. So I can rewrite this as the sine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. Does everybody agree with me? And that's basically what you're going to be doing. When you have an equation that you have your angles some are broken up by some are difference, you're going to have them broken up into this format. Um, okay. Asia, you didn't take anything out of the bag, did you? Are those still that are in that left pile? Yeah, the bag that's on my desk. You're just working on the ones that are on that pile? OK, all right, perfect. Um, so we have sine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. Now we can look at our sum and difference formula. So the sum and difference formula says when you have the sine of u plus v, well, what does u and v represent? u and v, all they represent are the two angles that you're adding or subtracting to get. So therefore, I can say u is going to be 60 and v is going to be 45. Okay. So now let's look at what's that formula. So the sine of u plus v is simply sine of u cosine of v. Um, plus cosine of u sine of v. Now, what's nice about these problems compared to what you guys have been doing so far? Last problem is, remember, I was like giving you recommendations of what to do and how to solve, right? These are much more cut and dry. Here's the formula. You find what angles u and v are, and you just plug them into the formula, and you solve. Does that make sense? That's all you're doing. You're just plugging basically them into a formula and simplifying. So let's figure out sine of u is 60 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees plus the cosine of 60 degrees times the sine of 45 degrees. Now, because we've been practicing knowing our unit circle so well, we should be able to evaluate for these like this, right? Hence why I've been like, stressing knowing that first quadrant of the unit circle so well. So the sine of 60 degrees, 60 degrees, that's going to be square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2. Plus cosine of 60 degrees, 1 half. Sine of 45 degrees, sine square root of 2 over 2. Does everybody see how I did that? and kind of did it rather quickly. That's why I've been giving you, that's why we've been doing that focus lesson. And that's why I'm giving you guys that quiz on that, to make sure you're really good at doing this. Now we just need to simplify. I'm sorry, say that again? Why don't we just multiply everything by two so that we don't have the fraction? I love, um, well, then you'd have to do that on the other side. You mean multiply, you can't just multiply, you can't just change the fractions unless you multiply by both sides. However, here's 3 times 2. Oh, you multiply. No, you're, uh, you're adding these two expressions. These two you're multiplying. So here's one way you could write the answer. 
Um, I believe uh, your book actually combines them into one radical. So if you guys are looking at the answers in the back of the book, that's how your book does it. Then you could also factor out a common term. What does the square root of 6 and the square root of 2, is there a number that you can divide out of square root of 6 and square root of 2 that they share? 2. So you could also rewrite it like this. I don't know what, your, I don't know what a, the end of the course exam will look like, but another way to write this would be square root of 2 times 4 times the square root of 3 plus 1. That is another way to write the exact same answer. Okay. Obviously, on, on your test, I would, I would accept all three of these. Okay. I'm not going to give like prefer one way or the other. However, if you guys are taking a multiple choice test, though, you might see one or one of those versions. Yes. Square root of 4 plus square root of 9 equals square root of 13? No. Square root of 13 is 5? Doesn't work, right? You cannot add radicals unless the index is the same, which it is, it's both square roots, and the radicand is exactly the same. You can multiply, but you can't add them. No, it's 6 and 2. Right. 